Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Seaworth Strategy Gamer and we are starting a new series today where we're exploring how to tackle climate change in gaming. So if you do know the channel a little bit, you do know that we've done that before in an excellent game called Fate of the World. That was more on the mechanics of how climate change uh, happens, how what we can do in terms of energy. This time we're playing Democracy 4. Democracy 4 is a game that's much more about the political consequences, about trying to get support for these uh, policies that can potentially tackle climate change and that is going to be hugely interesting and also balancing against some other aspects of society. I should say for now this is an early alpha build so don't consider any of this as final uh, and there's going to be probably some more features and all of that coming in but I do think it is a very interesting thing that we can try over here. So let's see how good we are going to do with the green type of policy. Now, what I really like about this game, and as we're starting over here, you can see it's basically, for now, we can only play as the United Kingdom or the United States. I think we would like to play as the United States because that is going to be a little bit more interesting. So, I'm going to explain a little bit what's happening here as we do jump into the game um, and what's going on. So, firstly, we do need to uh, select a party over here. There's not much of a deal besides that. It's just a name, uh, unfortunately, so there's no big um, effect over here. There are a lot of sliders. We're going to just start a vanilla game over here, and that will jump us right into the game. So, this is it. This is the main screen of the map, and I'm going to explain what's going on here uh, for a couple of minutes before we really jump into what's going on. Now, what I really do like about this game is that it does give you a sense of the balances and, and a sense of the sometimes very difficult um, decisions that you have to face as a politician. So let's look at how this is, uh, what's what's going on over here. So as you can see, this is the main screen. Uh, we've It's separated into a couple of things here in the center. So we've got law and order, uh, we've got public services, taxes, economy, welfare, foreign policy and transport sector. Transport sector is of course one of the sectors that we're going to look at in detail just as well as the economy and some of the public services. So in each of these sectors you will find a minister over here and you can see these ministers contribute to this thing here in the middle. These 16 points are one of the most interesting things or most important things of this game. This is our political capital. We have 16 points of political capital and we do need political capital to introduce new laws, to change laws um, and do various things. So this is hugely important and the ministers are what's giving that to you. And I really like that aspect because it demonstrates that, you know, a government cannot change everything at the same time. There is some work associated with our getting in new laws, um, gathering support, pushing that through Congress or Senate or whatever you have in your country. So that I think is is kind of interesting. So yeah, 16 points is all we have for now. That can be built up. Some policies are obviously more costly than others and, and that's fine. You can also see all of these guys over here are influenced by a couple of these things on the left. If we do hover over them, you can see that Edward Reigns over here, for example, is a patriot and he's religious. So not necessarily the person who is probably going to be very happy with us in the long term. But for now, you can see the patriots are extremely happy and that makes this person happy. And that means we get a lot of political support from him. We will need to balance that going forward and try to find... Um, either new ministers who are more aligned with our uh, thinking um, or at least place them somewhat. There's a balancing act there. So that's the first thing. Obviously, that's not the only thing. Speak about laws. So there are a couple of laws all denoted by these little circles here, these light grey uh, thingies. So for example, you have got the, I guess, state postal service, a very unexciting one. Um, and you can see just how it influences different things. You can see Socialists do like uh, our level of state postal services, capitalists currently don't like that, and it is reducing somewhat the unemployment. We can also click on that and you can see just how big these effects are. So for example, socialists a little bit happy about that. And we are about at a third or so of the funding of this law. There are going to be some implementation delays and so uh, that's not something that we do need to consider for now. Uh, what is important is we could, of course, change the funding of that, and you can see the political costs associated with uh, changing this. 
and bigger swings do cost more. So if we were to increase that uh, by a very large margin here, we that would be costing us a political power uh, of the 16 that we currently got. It would make capitalists even more grumpy about this, it would uh, make the socialists more happy, it would increase the membership of the socialists uh, to some degree, and it would reduce unemployment. Now. This is not our most important priority, the postal service is nice and all that, uh, but for now this is not the biggest part. So, there are a lot of these laws as you can see, um, and they all have different effects, and some of them are very straightforward, this is fairly honestly a very straightforward law, uh, but for example let's look at something like income tax, and you can see it has a lot more effects over here. It has some effects on equality, on charity, on middle earnings, poor earnings, high earnings, on GDP, on internet currency adaption, it's reducing middle income by by uh, a significant margin over here. Oh, sorry, it's reducing the happiness of middle income people and all of that. Other aspects, for example, recycling over here is helping the environment. And that is the next thing. These blue circles over here represent certain variables, certain things that are going in in your economy. So GDP, obviously, is sort of the state of our economy. Um, and that can be high, it can be low. We can't directly change that, but we can change all of the laws that are flowing into that. As you can see, that is a lot. And all of the different statuses uh, that go into that. GDP is one of the most central things here that is connected to pretty much everything. So it is something that we're going to look at in detail. But of course, the other thing that we're going to look at in some detail here is the environment. And if I could get rid of the respiratory disease. No, I can't. Right. Anyway, you can see the environment here is influencing a couple of things. Um, and there are a couple of other things that are connected to that. These red things. Red things are not particularly a good thing. So our um, environment currently is sitting at about 30% out of the 100% value that it could take. So all in all, it's not doing great. And you can see there are a lot of things that are influencing that. Uh, most importantly, the GDP. So our relatively good economy is reducing uh, or is having an impact on the environment. The car usage does and the air travel does have some effect but it's not really big because air travel itself is it's kind of high but it could be worse. So yeah hmm, there's that. Right. The red things on the other hand are things that are not a status that is generally true but you can see these things have a start and stop trigger here. So these effects only come into play if our value for this parameter is higher than the start value, then it comes into play. If we ever push it below the stop trigger, it will stop to be the case. For example, respiratory disease over here, pretty, pretty bad. Uh, parents hate that, so parents really, really dislike that it's there. Productivity goes down, so that's not great. Any of these red things are typically not things that you would like. In particular, we have a high degree of pollution, so that's an effect of the environment being as bad as it is. Uh, but also due to our population as it is. So yeah, these things are there. Car usage, again, one of the things that we probably want to look at. And then what we've got, uncompetitive economy. That has some effect on the GDP and everything. So it's a very interconnected mess. On the left over here, we've got all of the people that are currently in our society. You can see they've got two bars, how happy they are. Commuters, for example, are currently not very happy because of the traffic congestion and the gridlock. So another bad effect down here. Um, so very low level there. On the other hand, patriots here are extremely happy, um, which is kind of nice, but not going to be uh, the case for long. And uh, mostly because of the military spending and such. The other bar that you can see is sort of the light one is their membership. So you can see... For example, everyone has a very high membership, so these are things that do affect everyone. Obviously, everyone does belong in the everyone category, and that's fine. But you can also see middle income is sort of two-thirds here or so uh, along the way. So there are a lot of middle income people. Uh, they're completely, they're less self-employed people. There are a couple of conservatives in the country and so on. Right. That's it for the main uh, thing. That's it for the left over here. Then we've got the top bar over here. We've got, currently, we're working at a deficit. So we've got an income of 800 billion US dollar per quarter. So for every three months. Uh, we've got expenditures of about 900. So there's a shortfall of eight, 81 billion dollar per turn. Uh, and currently our debt is sitting at 25 trillion dollars. So that's fairly significant and we will need to address that at some point. We've also got a couple of other things down here, including intelligence briefings. So if we screw with a certain group too, too much, they might have found a cell and try to kill us. 
that would obviously not be very very conductive to our mission so yeah let's see about that um, whether for example uh, the commuters or the car people or anything like that uh, these guys might be attacking us at some point if we can't make them happy in another way or convert them to another group not everyone is only part of one group um, so for example if we do look over here I think I can no wait a minute um, can I get one of you this is the cabinet I would like to just have you on one of these people so let's pick a focus group over here so uh, you can see for example this person here doesn't really approve of us he or well or she is that Shelby Ramirez she is no thing designated there but she's a motorist so that's a very strong influence on her she's also poor she's self-employed she's a capitalist she's religious she's kind of youthful she's a little bit conservative um, but she also is a little bit of an environmentalist so that's not great um, various things do influence her approval of us it's relatively low um, this gentleman over here um, another poor motorist does like us a lot um, so that's you know kind of all of these people do sit somewhere um, and we do need to make sure that we retain some popularity here because ultimately we'll be voted in again so without further ado let's start the game and let's start about the most pressing issues that we've got the most pressing issues of course in our terms is the co2 that is relatively high so that increases the average temperatures which for now are relatively low but it will increase over time so that's a bad bad thing this is about the degree of uh, simulation that goes into here. There are negative effects associated with that. Uh, but this is what we want to bring down. So we need to bring down the CO2 emissions. You can see the strength on that is largely driven from GDP and car usage. So car usage, as you can see, comes up again and again and again because it's extremely high in America currently. Who would have thought? So let's look at this here for a moment. You can see car usage is driving uh, a bad influence on the environment going from left to right here uh, it's increasing the respiratory diseases it's increasing obesity and um, it's being decreased by car taxes and petrol taxes it's increasing co2 pollution uh, co2 emissions and pollutions it's dry, dry, being driven somewhat by the gig economy as people circle around, uh, drive around more and order more stuff so that's not great. It's increasing oil demand over there um, and at the top you can see there's a certain other things going on. So for example bus usage would decrease car usage um, as would rail usage. So to some extent these are supplements to one another um, and for now very much the car is the focus of everything here. So definitely car usage I think is one of the first things that we would do want to address over here. There's also the budget deficit so what we could try to do is increase the taxes that would give us a little bit more income as you can see down here and um, these things are typically rather unpopular but it would drive down the motorist mo membership a little bit and that is kind of nice and you can see sort of it would drive down car usage somewhat it would increase our income so that's nice it would be really unpopular with motorists it would be really relatively unpopular with farmers and because they are living a little bit more rural and they think they need their cars at least for now there's also petrol tax increasing that is incredibly expensive uh, but it also would push down car usage so these are the options in regarding to existing policies that we would have to decrease car usage anything else yeah we could do road building we could decrease that increase that um, but for now I don't think that is what we need to do we can also pick new policies over here in all of these categories let's look at transport so there are a couple of things that we could do in transport and um, bicycle subsidies uh, you can get a feeling about what the effect of this would be up over here so it would be costing us between anywhere between 200 million or 2 billion uh, depending on how heavily we would fund that and um, it would need to come we'd need to spend two political power to introduce that so it's fairly cheap but it's also uh, probably not the most um most relevant um policy that we've got we could increase bus lanes we could subsidize buses we could put emission limits on cars that i think is is a fairly important one this is kind of expensive at 13 political power uh, but it would have some some very significant emission uh, effects here on co2 emissions and some positive effects on the environment so that's worthwhile to keep in mind we could subsidize that as well we could do congest congestion charging uh, that wouldn't be the worst idea we could do a cyclist campaign similar i think to the bicycle 
um, bicycle subsidies in all in all so it's kind of nice but not really the most important ones we could do high speed uh, subsidies also very very interesting one or this one is also kind of interesting a telecommuting in initiative so uh, that would make commuters actually kind of happy it would drive down car usage it would increase trade unionists that's not necessarily great because I think they don't really like us so that's that's okay it would decrease the m number of commuters so that would also be great because ultimately it would reduce our vulnerability to that so you know what we're going to implement that policy once you implement that you can basically change the level of that for free and basically you can see most of these effects are going to go bigger as we are investing more there's a cost associated to that but honestly i think i'm fine with that so Car usage would drop down dramatically. It's going to take some time for this to become really effective. Um, but honestly, I'm fine with that. So let's apply these changes. It's going to cost us $6 billion. So that's not great in terms of our deficit. But you know what? We do need to address these issues over here. So let's do that. Right. A couple of policies. These are read down here are basically ones that are currently not attainable because they are co too costly. 25 political power. We don't really have that much. So eh, these are not things that we can do right now. We would need to save up on that. I don't think that's what we want to do over here right now. I think we want to be a little bit more aggressive in pushing for other things. And I think fuel efficiency standards would be very, very good. Or indeed, use car emission limits. Both of these do have some, some very useful, useful effects over here. Electric car transition would also be a very nice thing to drive forward. Now, motorists wouldn't really like that, and that is an issue because a lot of our people are actually motorists, so that is not great. On the other hand, environmentalists would like us, the environment would do better, CO2 emissions would go down, and we are starting uh, to see some car, um, some electric car thingies, and car usage would go down, so honestly, let's implement that. It's also not very expensive because this is just a regulation, and uh, we aren't spending any money uh, to buy new things as the government we're just saying as the government there are certain limits uh, to the legal to the fumes that cars can emit and that will nicely drive down co2 emissions so that's very nice car usage will not go down as much as i would have hoped to only two percent down here so that's not great uh, motorists will hate us but you know what that's that's going to be fine um, and just as is so that does leave us with only one political power so we're going to go ahead here and go to the next turn every turn is three months so a couple of things happen at the start of the turn firstly you got this overview so here are some key figures um, and you can see for example that health is pretty low um, currently we're going to look at that in a moment there's typically one event that is denoted by this little question mark over here and here is a question a dilemma that we are being faced with so a law has been proposed to regulate the salt, fat and sugar content and nutritional value of food sold to children, including food sold in fast food restaurants and, of course, food served in schools. We could leave the law unchanged um, or we could regulate that a little bit more. We are going to regulate that because, yeah, definitely that is something that will make parents happy. It's going to be something that increases health and it's going to be something that is driving down obesity. It is going to screw with capitalists. So capitalists do not like uh, the change that we are making here. But I think since obesity is one of our big issues at the moment, I think this is fairly fine. There are some other issues that we could potentially uh, trigger. So for example, hospital overcrowding. You can see we are close to the star trigger here, but it's not trending upwards currently. So I think that's fine. We don't need to uh, deal with that right right now. So since we did introduce a couple of things last turn, uh, let's see how this goes. So you can see Basically, we've got the telecommuting initiative, we've got the car emission limit, and you can see this is just taking a tiny dip down here in terms of car usage. It's going to be better over time. You can see the telecommuting initiative here is going to ultimately drive that down much, excuse me, much further. Uh, but for now, it's only going to have a tiny impact. So a lot of these changes will be very, very gradual. And you can see just the tiniest uptick here in terms of the environment. So that's nice. How about CO2 emissions? Yeah, they go down just the tiniest bit. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Anyway, we've got 17 more political power, so that's fine. Uh, for now, I'm not going to change the government here. Uh, we will probably need to change out some of our ministers later. Uh, but for now, I'm happy with them because a lot of these people are kind of happy. So 
that's fine um, and we're gonna switch them around at a later point in time right how about obesity by the way this should start to drop down dramatically over time but I think still for the most part car usage is one of the biggest concerns that we've got because again the pollutions here are driven largely by cars uh, and they do have some negative effects here they are making environmentalists very very unhappy and uh, they're decreasing health they're decreasing tourism there are environmental protests going on because of the state of the environment so that's not great and um, the gig economy honestly i think that's not such a bad one gdp it is generally better to have more gdp because it's gonna drive up the income that you're gaining so that is fine i i don't think that is is too too bad now i'm tempted to go for more things that would drive down car usage uh, because of the dual effect here by obesity which is increasing our our healthcare cost and um, quite dramatically and the respiratory diseases which again is going to decrease productivity and which in turn since you know productivity does decrease Sorry, low productivity does inc uh, result in this uncompetitive economy here. I think it would be great if we could bring up productivity by getting rid of the product, uh, respiratory diseases. So that would be fantastic. And I think we do need to drive down car usage. So let's get again to the trans... No, nothing we can do in terms of taxes, I think. Could do a couple of things here in terms of subsidies or anything uh, but I think for now this is fine let's let's actually try to address this more aggressively over here and I think one of the things that we want to do here is the cyclist campaign it's a tiny thing it's increasing health it is de uh, lowering all of these uh, usages here and it's decreasing obesity so it's fine it's not a big one it's only two uh, political power so that is definitely something that we'd want to take we could actually introduce some taxes here that wouldn't be the worst idea we could do carpooling campaigns that would drive down car usage quite a bit interestingly enough we could do new car subsidiaries uh, subsidies that would probably increase car usage but it would reduce respiratory diseases and co2 emissions and oil demand because new cars are more efficient on the other hand that is kind of expensive and it would really get rid of the most important problem here that we've got with car usage. So that's not great. The other policy that I'm eyeing with is limit or ban cars in cities. That is hugely expensive, but but it's going to increase environmentalists a lot. It's going to decrease car usage by quite a bit. So that I think would be sort of the ultimate green policy that we're looking for here. So let's see whether we can't save up on that in, for, for, let's say, in about three turns or so. Um, and that wouldn't be the worst. So the question is, what can we do that is cheap and inexpensive right away? You know what? I think the bicycle subsidies are going to go great uh, with the other things that we are doing in terms of encouraging biking. So that is going to be fine and nice. This kind of expensive carpooling campaign, you know what? I think this is also very inexpensive. Um, in terms of mo both money and political power. So let's do that. It's going to only have a tiny effect, but I think it might be worthwhile. That does leave us with a couple of uh, political power points left here, but let's see whether we can do the uh, the shift to banning cars in cities. It's a big, big thing, but let's see. We've got a question here about uh, positive discrimination. So basically, do we want to make uh, set quotas for ethnic minorities? Does that uh, affect sex as well? No, just... You know what, since you know we are doing a more progressive run over here, let's pass the law. Personally, I'm, I'm not a great fan of these things, uh, but ethnic minorities, liberals do like it, gender equality is going to increase, liberalism is going to increase, and conservatives are going to be not that happy about this. Eh, it's, it's what we need to do. So, yeah, there we go. Oh, by the way, notice that health is going slightly up over here um, as we have introduced all of the cyclist campaign and the children's food. So that's very, very lovely to see. And I do think we should see an effect on obesity over here. Yeah, so that's nice. That is starting to come down very nicely down here. Um, and that's great. How are we doing in terms of the environment? We are doing baby steps over here. Now, the issue with all of this is that, of course, it's not going to be very linear. And there are going to be hiccups. So there are going to be uh, negative consequences to what we are doing over here. On the other hand, you can see the gridlock situation here. 
because tra traffic congestion has come down um, a little bit here, because car usage is coming down ever so slightly, but it is coming down. So that does mean that the gridlock situation here is below its stop trigger now, so that should uh, stop basically next turn, um, and that would be fantastic. So yeah, great. Uh, how much political power are we gaining per turn, by the way? It doesn't tell exactly, but I'm I would be guessing around 15. So if we do want to ban cars from cities next turn, uh, we basically can spend only around four political power um, at this turn. So. Not banning low MPG cars for now, uh, that would be too expensive. So this is the number that I'm always looking at. Oh, driverless car laws, that would be interested. interesting. Electric cars initiative, yeah, no, any of these are really too expensive for now. So I don't think we're going to introduce any of these things. Are there any other policies that are sort of easily available to us that we probably want to do? Law and order, there's nothing that we want to do over here for now. In public services, we've got the Climate Change Adoption Fund. That is going to be hugely expensive, so we can't really afford that for now. I think what would be lovely is... Ooh, reforestation. That That is a very, very useful one. But I think it is too expensive if we want to do the other one. So, yeah, that's 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 a no-no. No, 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 no for now. So, that's fine. Um, in terms of taxes, yeah, taxes are typically kind of um, expensive to introduce. We could do something like health food subsidiaries, so that would be fine. We could do the reverse into junk food uh, taxes, which I don't consider to be too bad. They don't give you a lot of money for tax, uh, but they do increase, decrease obesity, and they are increasing plant-based diets, and that, of course, has some very good positive effects as well. So... One of these, very, very interesting, and you can see just how many policies there are, some of which we definitely want to introduce, like smart meters. Uh, but for now, I don't think that is the most important one. I think what we should do instead is actually have a look at the pollution controls over here. So we've currently got pollution controls in place. That is something that we can raise, and that is going to have a positive effect on the environment. It's not going to be too expensive, so you know what? Let's do that. Um, it's going to be nice. It's going to drive down GDP a little bit, but I think it might be balanced with um, some of the other effects. So, yeah, gridlock has vanished over here, so that's nice to see. How's GDP looking? So our economy is actually ticking up here a little bit. Um, some of that might be due to global um, things. Some of these are other things. Oh, 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 yes, lovely. Look at that. Here's a deadly virus outbreak. That is coming at the most convenient times. That's driving down GDP, so that's going to decrease our financial ability to do anything. Um, it's going to decrease tourism by a lot and trade, so these are going to have further effects on GDP, so that's not great. Um, it's decreasing business confidence, which another effect is, is that's, that's going to be pretty bad. Look at our budget over here, so you can see basically the global economy here is going down a little bit, our debt is increasing. Um, and these here are the most important things. This is the difference here in terms of what we are getting um, in terms of money. We currently have a very good credit rating, so that's fine. But yeah, we do need to address some of these. Oh, we're just shy um, of the required political capital here to ban uh, cars from our city. So that's that's unfortunate. And um, let's make sure that we're not overspending again. Just a couple of points would be okay over here. So we've got the pollution controls. I think we've got also, let me just briefly think about what I had in mind. So, there are some further useful things down here. This is biofuels. I mean, recycling isn't isn't bad. It would drive up the economy a little bit, uh, the environment. It would be costing us a little bit in terms of political capital. It's not that expensive, so... It is kind of a nice thing. Don't don't get me wrong. It's it's kind of okay actually, but I'm also kind of you know with a virus outbreak we probably do want to. Yeah, you can see healthcare demand is is going up here, uh, kind of dramatically actually. So we would probably want to have a look at our health situation as well. So you're driving health, aren't you? Yeah. So health is relatively low, but we did try to bring it up. I think this is going to go down again though. Uh, because all of, all of the other effects, so not great. Can we do something about health? Can we can we drive that up? Well, there's the alcohol abuse. There's a doctor strike. There are free school meals. How's obesity looking? It's coming down, but not much. 
So what we could do is increase the funding that we've got for the Food Standards Agency. It's not going to be a huge change though, so honestly probably not the most relevant. I would really like to get rid of obesity so that at least the health here is, is looking a little bit better. So probably let's go to public services and let's actually do at the very least compulsory food like oh that's 12 political power that's a little bit too much yeah but we i mean we're in the middle of a virus here we do need to address that in some way so i would think that well we could do an eat healthy campaign let's implement that i think it's it's a nice change over here obesity is actually going down by that quite quite dramatically nicely seven points that's great plant-based diets that's also good so that's fine let's do another turn over here and that's fine appoint you an ambassador so basically we have to join uh, the choice between a patriot um, and some liberal we're gonna go with the liberal because it's just more fitting to to this uh, playthrough over here and that's fine unfortunately one of our major donors has abandoned our party so that's not great and GDP is somewhat tanking over here as well so not great either and we are gonna have hospital overcrowding in a second over here probably driven by the very high healthcare demand which is ticking down but we are gonna have that situation so it has increased over the star trigger so there's not much that we can do about that it's incredibly it's incredibly um, disheartening on the other hand the environment is slowly starting to tick up Oh, I think we might not have the ability to stack up more than this political power. So that is that is an, a mistake then on my side. So we cannot actually get to the level of political power that we do need right now. Um, and we did waste a little bit over here. It's not the end of the world, but it's definitely not great either. So yeah, not not great at all. So one of the things that we do need to address here is our deficit because we do need more money to get to new things our gdp is going to be rocked in various directions over here due to the world economy and things beyond our control frankly but also uh, due to the fact that some of our policies just are not very good going to be very good for the gdp and such so before we get a worth credit rating we do need to address our balancing uh, our issues here uh, with balancing the economy so that i think is is something that we do need to address and the big elephant in the room for me, if we do look at our debt, uh, let's look at what we are spending money on. So we could try to increase our income. Most of that is currently coming from income taxes. We could boost these a little bit and that would be having a huge effect. Same with car tax or other taxes. But I think it's much more worthwhile to look at our expenditures over here. And you can see the breakdown uh, that we are spending on various different things over here. And you can actually see one of our biggest items here is military spending, which is maxed out to overwhelming force. This is hugely nice for Patriots. It's decreasing unemployment, so that's all great. Uh, but, oh, that's actually increasing uh, the private space industry, which is interesting. But, I would like to lower that. It's going to be very, very expensive to lower that, um, but it would reduce... Our, our expenditures here very very significantly so let's do that um, and let's basically suck out all of the funding uh, for the military and see how good that is going to do us patriots will hate us from now on but you know what i think it is nice to have some money around that we can spend on things that at least we do consider to be more useful right that being said i think it would be great to still try to use our effects down here to well at least address a couple of these issues uh, one of the other things is that we are facing uh, that we are being faced with some level of alcohol abuse and i'm really not a fan of alcohol abuse in our situation so it's not the most important thing to to address but it would be great if we could at least try to reduce that a little bit it would also be nice to do a keep the country tidy campaign because that is going to drive up the membership of environmentalists um, and making them more happy is going to be very useful for us so that might be not not be the worst idea you know what let's do it it's only two political power um, it's very inexpensive in terms of money people will like us for it 
um, and just being liked is always a good thing over here. Tobacco awareness, alcohol awareness campaign. You know what? Let's do it. It's going to drive down alcohol consumption and that is going to uh, lead to some very good effects, I think. So that's nice. Um, well, what can else can we do? Especially in terms of transport, bus lanes, bus subsidies. These are all kind of expensive, so they are not the most useful, I think. So, you know what? Let's actually increase then recycling. That is also going to be useful for the environment. Any other direct effect here that we've got? Pollution controls and clean energy subsidies. Now that of course is going to be very expensive here in terms of money and capitalists will hate it but it is going to bring down CO2 emissions dramatically and it is going to increase our energy efficiency so I think this is all going to be very great. Let's apply these changes. We're only spending one political capital here uh, but a lot of money but I think it is worthwhile to uh, use that money for this purpose so I think that's fine got some labor laws over here that we could change minimum wages and such all very important but just not all not very much the focus of what we're doing right now so I think that's okay we're gonna keep the country tidy that's fine any new policies that we could still enact fuel efficiency standards it's gonna decrease car usage right no it's gonna increase car usage so that's interesting because fuel is more useful and um, it is gonna increase the car usage Capitalists hate it, environmentalists love it, CO2 emissions would come down, but I don't think we want cars for the moment. I think we want to... Oh yeah, let's do reforestation. This is a very good one. Environmentalists happy, pollution coming down, CO2 emissions coming down, unemployment coming down, respiratory disease coming down. Lovely, what's not to like? I love it. Right, let's do hit the next turn here one more time, um, and then we're going to see... Yeah, we've got the hospital overcrowding, so that's not nice. We've got a question here about two fishing quotas. Of course, we are going to agree to that, um, which is going to drive up unemployment, which is not nice, and it's going to decrease GDP by whooping 4%. Well, I'm not sure I agree with that assessment. That's interesting. Uh, on the other hand, you can see that our health here is going up uh, quite a bit due to uh, the fact that we are using more cyclists, so that's nice. Obesity is coming down here in steps, but it's still not where we want it to be. How about our environmental protests? Yeah, they've been decreased a little bit as our uh, as our environment here is doing slightly better. And you can see this is this is going to start to be affected positively over here. So we are making some progress, uh, but on the other hand, ooh, and pollution is going to go away. So that's very very nice indeed. So yeah, I think environmentalists are slowly and but surely coming around to our point of view. It might be a good time then to reshuffle our cabinet. I don't know. Oh, and interestingly enough, we still are facing a deficit over here, even though... Did I not decrease military spending? I thought I had decreased that. Did I? Well, that's weird. Okay, it's starting out over here. Is it only going to come down over time? Oh yeah, there's an implementation delay. Okay, so it's only going to come down over time here. But that's okay. That, that's fine. Our deficit should start to decrease a little bit over here. By the way, you can see that the global economy, this graph, is coming down a little bit. And our relative GDP is... It's sort of hovering around that point, so that is uh, something that we do need to address over time here. But that being said, I think now is a very good place to put in a cut. I am going to release these things every Friday, uh, so that we are again on a little bit of a Fridays for Future mission over here. And that's going to be interesting, I think. So yeah, looking forward to see you guys next time around on next Friday, when we're going to try to get finally to the point where we can uh, ban cars in cities. Last thing that I do want to look at is... Over our first term over here, you can see car usage has come down quite a bit. It's not a dramatic shift, but slowly and surely we are pushing the country into the right direction. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like and all of that, especially on the first episode here. And, yeah, again, do hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye, guys.